This afternoon, we're going to have an opportunity to see a masterclass from Chef Monty from Soul Foods of the Algarve. Um, Chef Monty has very kindly agreed to join us, along with Samelia David, to show us one of his signature dishes, uh, which I think is going to be a great surprise for all of us. And for those men who are here today, it might be a tip for what you can make for your loved one over the course of this next two or three days for Valentine's Day. So I'm glad we've all said welcome to Chef Monty. And what I'd like to do now is to have a chat with Monty before he shows us his demonstration. So Colin, can we go to Spotlight two screens? Perfect. That's great. Monty, David, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So tell us, what is soul food all about? Okay, soul food, it's uh, about uh, bringing all the flavors from the Algarve because we believe we have so many quality here. So we decided to create this company, not only to do things from outside, from France or in other countries. And we decided to use the products from the Algarve and from the season. And uh, this is uh, what we want to do it and bring all the flavors to all the people that come to Algarve and to want to try what the best things that we have here. That's fantastic. So a combination of special fresh foods from the Algarve exactly. along with your particular and unique twist to make them special for all of us. I guess. That's well done. It. And what are you going to make for us this afternoon? Okay, today I decided to do a special uh, dessert because I believe in Valentine's Day everyone needs something sweet and <laughs> nice. Uh, so we decided to do it a parcel nata. But our style is completely different from the, what we normally do. Uh, and everyone see the pastel nata. This one is a dessert. Then you can uh, enjoy with the ice cream and it's different, completely different in the end of a nice dinner. So pastel nata is a creation that we did it here. And this is a dessert you can't find anywhere because this is di completely different what uh, the, the traditional, traditional pastel nata then you can find in any coffee or any pastry. Okay, so I think everyone will enjoy it and I hope you enjoy it, the video. And when I was talking to you previously, you mentioned that Somalia David will be making a special cocktail. Yes, yes. Yeah, so we're going to be making a cocktail with a champagne base that is going to be more in the sweeter side. It's going to have a little bit of uh, some, a uh, little bit of a heavier touch. But it's going to be good stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun to make it. And it's going to be complementing the beautiful signature soul food pastel nut. So that's so going when, to work very well. So when you finish your demonstrations, shall I send everybody who's on camera right now down yeah. to your place so they can sample it? Definitely. We're making, we're making, uh, we are making pints. We're making uh, jars of uh, cocktails and we are making a big, uh, a lot of uh, like around uh, 300 pastel nata. So everybody's not. <laughs> <laughs> now you know me i like pastel nata but even i can't eat 300 in one it's, just, it's okay it's uh, very light you're not even going to feel it you can eat like five or six at a time Don't know what it's about. <laughs> that's great okay i think that's enough for us having a chat let's see what chef monty is going to show us today and recognize just how wonderful this unique dessert is that he has made Hello everybody, thank you for joining us. My name is Chef Paul Monteiro, but uh, you can call me Chef Monty. I'm the CEO and executive chef in the Soul Food Catering. And today I'm going to share my recipe for of, or one of my signature desserts for your Valentine's Day celebration, along with a cocktail for prepared by David. For, for more information, uh, on Soul Food Algarve Catering, please visit us at www.soulfood.pt. Okay, I hope you enjoy it. So, we will start to put it 6 milliliters of water, plain water, on a pan. Okay, I have on this pot 1 kilo of sugar, it has to be a lot because this is earth, it's for a lot of people. You're going to put 1 kilo of the sugar inside. Okay, and we'll take to the fire. Okay, now we will start to do it. The milk, we put it one liter inside. Okay, and 
afternoon is we will, we will start first putting the flour using a scale you put it 200 grams of flour inside okay 200 grams A little bit more. <laughs> That's it. And you put it 25 grams of maizena. Okay? That's it. After this, we will start to mix everything here. And we will put a little bit of milk inside. I have for the recipe one liter and a half. First, you put one liter here, and you start to put the milk over here until you do the kind of bechamel, not a lot, because it's going to warm up the rest inside of the pan. One important thing on this recipe: the water, when it starts to boil, you only can leave it for three minutes. After that, you have to turn off the oven. Okay? Let me do it and I will show you how I want my bechamel before I mix the racks. Okay, now this is what you want to be your bechamel, okay? Look. It's not very liquid and it's okay. So now that you have your bechamel here, more or less ready, you're going to drop the rest of the milk inside. And you're going to put it on the fire to warm up as well. Go. Please don't leave it the milk to boil, okay? Before boiling, you, can, you have to take the milk out. Okay? You can mix all of this. If you want, if you want, of course, you can mix some lemon. I like because give a really good taste. And I'm going to show you just a little bit of lemon inside of the bechamel, okay? Only a tiny bit for the taste. Okay? Well, our rot is almost boiling with the sugar. Please don't cut the sugar because if you cut the sugar, you're going to lose the recipe. Okay? So now, pay attention always to the milk as well. So I will wait until that boiling. Over here, I already put it six, uh, 15 yellows of the egg, okay? And three all eggs, okay? Then it's something that I'm gonna mix in the end. I will show you after. Let's make a little bit more. It's almost. This is a very important process now when you're gonna mix the milk with your bechamel, kind of bechamel, you have to be, be careful because you have to warm it up a little bit with the milk and drop everything at, at once because if not, you're not going to create a, a special kind of uh, bechamel here. Then I will show in the end, okay? You don't want this liquid. So we have already our water with the sugar boiling. We're going to wait now for three minutes, okay? And hopefully, okay, it's boiling already. So I'm gonna do a kind of magic to be faster, okay? Okay, I'm back. So now, after three minutes, we have our 
water with sugar is over here it's a nice condom okay and we have our milk is very hot now and this process is very very important okay you start to drop a little bit to warm up the flour and after you just drop everything once and we create this beautiful creamy okay. Okay, and you create this bechamel that is very, very beautiful. Yummy, yummy. Okay. I will try to show you here so you can see better how does this stay. It stays like this. I don't know if you can see. It's not liquid, it's like a cream. Okay, I will show you with my spoon. Then I drop. A little right here. See how this is taste? It's like a cream. Okay. Now I will mix this. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay. Now you will have to wait a little bit because this process you have to always leave it to get cold, a normal temperature okay so normally you have to do this process in the morning and in the afternoon you finish your dessert but now i will make some chip here and you will see after the results okay i'll show you in a bit all right now that we have everything it's cold this is called the bechamel it's called it's over here i will start to drop this first we will close the machine this is a very important process because you need to drop this really slowly if you drop faster Will, they will not connect like a mayonnaise, okay? So what we will do is we will start our machine and we will start to put drop this very slowly. Very, very slowly. Inside. Okay? Okay, now that it's everything cold, our syrup is inside of our bechamel. We'll start start to put our eggs inside. Okay, the fifteen eggs and three eggs, fifteen yellows and three eggs. Okay, and you just drop this slowly. We'll mix with the rest. Preheat your oven before 220 degrees. This is almost done. Okay, beautiful. It's done. All the eggs are here. And now what we will do is we will prepare our trail. Then I did it already. It's a paper film here. Okay. And now I will mix the rest to make sure that this is perfect by hand, just like this. Finish. Okay. We'll go down. is proper mixer you just go with this and you go around slowly really slowly don't don't hit to put air inside okay 
Yes, go. Perfect. Our oven is already hot. 250 degrees. So now, I will drop this over here. And we will drop this inside. Slowly. That's it. Okay. Now, you pick up this and you take to the open. Perfect. Okay. Let's see the results now. Okay. Now, after 30 minutes, 220 degrees, I will take from the oven our pastel nata. Okay, so this is the result of our lovely pastel de nata. Okay, so now I will just drop this one over here to rest a little bit. Okay, and I will do it one that I done before just to show you how to roll now because the process is like this. Now we have to leave a dead one to get cold. You gonna put on the freezer to freezer for you can cut after the pieces as you wish okay normally i give uh, like five centimeters uh, like this and eight centimeters like this so we can roll them proper i have over here already one that i done before okay and i will cut to show you how you can roll your pastel nata you use the filo pastry okay one like this okay and you do it like this and you use the butter with the pencil to do it like this to make more crispy okay after that we will cut now the pastel nata the size that we wish and for this one, like I said before, five centimeters to one side. This is it. And now you will roll this, okay? Pay attention now. Like this and like this. What I will do it now is to put more butter because I need this to get crispy. This is the only way to get the crispy one. Okay, I will keep the oven on because I will put this one after in the oven as well. Okay, so now after that, I will roll one side, the other side, and I will put this one under. Put more water on the top. And we will take now, let me just pick up a trail. I will use this one now. Okay, I will put some butter over here. I will set our pastel matter here and we will take to the oven. Okay, like this, simple. Now we will wait only for 10 minutes and after this we will serve the pastel nata. Normally I like to serve with some ice cream, like vanilla ice cream, cream ice cream, or if you wish, because it's Valentine's Day, you can serve with something more spicy, okay? You can decide it. Okay? See you in a bit, I will show you the result. Now after 10 minutes we will take our dessert from the oven and let's see if it's okay. Oh, awesome, I knew it. So we have 
you have a beautiful color, okay, from our pastel nata, and we'll, we'll serve. It's very crispy. You even can hear. Lovely. Okay, let's wash. Now we'll serve with the lovely vanilla ice cream, like I said before. Because this for me is just a perfect wedding. Okay. In just a final touch. Some icing sugar on the top. And here is our Valentine dessert. I hope you have fun. And now I will start another cocktail with David. She he will show you how to do it. And I hope you enjoy it. Okay? See you in a bit. Hello, good evening, everybody. Good afternoon, good morning, whatever time you're going to be watching us. Nice to have you here. My name is David. I'm an event manager at Maitre D for Soul Food International. And now I would like to show you a beautiful cocktail that is going to go with the famous signature dish, Soul Food Pastel de Nata. It's a very simple, very simple cocktail to do. So we have lime juice cordial. We have also uh, blackberry and raspberry cordial. And also we have a little bit of uh, vermouth, white vermouth and also some sparkling wine. You can use uh, champagne, you can use uh, Portuguese sparkling wine, whatever you like. And one of my favorite drinks, vodka, which is going to give a little bit kick to the end, to the cocktail. So it's very simple. So we have some ice, we have some fruits, as this uh, cocktail is going to be with the champagne, so it's always going to look much nicer with the fruits. So it's very simple, so what we're going to do in the beginning, we're going to chill the glass to make it look, look nice and beautiful. So you just put some ice on it and you just swirl it around. Maybe let it stay for a while. If you have one of these, please, you can use it. If you don't have it, it's fine. You can just use a glass to mix the drinks on it. So what I do, I'll put half a cup of white vermouth. This is enough for two drinks. I'll put another half a cup of lime juice cordial it's gonna be more or less the same like a shot glass and I'll put half a cup of vodka this sounds interesting after that you can even put some ice on it if you would like to make to chill it a little bit that's what I usually do. Opa. Opa. Chill a little bit more. And while we are here, I'm going to wait, make one for Mr. Chef Mont Monty because he was working so hard. And I believe he is also has the right to enjoy a little bit of the thing. So as you chill it, take a little bit of sugar on the side. As you chill the glasses, so the glasses are chilled. So after that, what you do, you can cut some lemon wedges and just on the rim of the glass, just pass it there a little bit. Get the plate with a little bit of sugar. And just do the rim. Then you'll have some sparkling wine. Just pour sparkling wine almost a little bit more than half. I don't know if I'm more for the pastel mata for a drink. Uh, Mix a little bit.
and then you can just put half a cup to each glass and then in the end what I do to make it look like a nicer effect with a cordial from a berry cordial you can use strawberry cordial anything basically that's going to make it more in the reddish color because it's valentine's and you want to be romantic so you just put a little bit and it's going to give you that nice color what i usually do also with the lemon that i used i make it like a garnish to make it look more stylish and that's it Love My Soul cocktail from Soul Food and the beautiful signature Soul Food Pastel Nut. We hope you enjoy. Thank you very much. And now it's time for us to enjoy. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers and joy. Bless you. God bless. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Monty, that was fantastic. And David, thank you, thank you. so much. Oh, here I am. Thank you so much. We thoroughly enjoyed that. It's great fun. And now Terry's going to make the um, cocktail for Valentine's and Ava's going to cook the dessert. So I'm All right. <laughs> party party. Uh, th um, the recipe will be available to everyone here if you'd like it, and um, we'll give you some details on how to get hold of it. It's also going to be on the website this afternoon. But I know that there's some of you who want to ask some questions of Chef. So if you want to ask a question, just, just wave. Um, I think we're going to start with Kay. Kay, you've got a question for Chef. Yeah, I wanted to know, because I'm relatively new to the Algarve, so for me, shopping over here, shopping over here is all a bit new for me, because I'm new to the Algarve. So I would like to know, um, what types of sugar can I use if I can't get the one that you've used in the recipe? Can I swap it for something else, or do I have to use the same one? Uh, that I'm going to go on mute, because I have two rotties. <laughs> okay, that one it's uh, normally it's easy to find. Is the regular sugar, but normally I prefer to use the caster sugar because the caster sugar is the best one to me for the dessert. But you can use the regular one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Much appreciated. You're welcome. Thanks, Kay. And oh, we've got Jenny was going to ask. Jenny wanted a question. Where's oh yes. Oh, um, Jenny. <laughs> My. My question is that you were doing for a large quantity. I don't know how many people you were, how many portions you were catering for, but um, if I just wanted to do it for two or four people, how much would I use? Would I divide it by a quarter or half? It's, it's a little bit difficult. Uh, I can't say then. The maximum that you can reduce is in three parts because I use three eggs, three eggs and uh, 15 uh, yellow ones. So if you reduce for one egg and um, uh, five yellows, you can reduce the recipe, okay? And you can reduce all the rest. For example, you have one liter and half okay. of milk, you can reduce for half of milk only, okay? You reduce only on three portions because if you reduce okay. more than that, it's going to be complicated. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Jane, you're waving at me. Jane, you've got a question for Chef. You need to unmute. I have to unmute. There we are. Yes. Hi, Chef Monty. Um, I noticed that you were using. Um, stuff called maizena. Now, I think I'm right in saying that is corn flour? Yeah. Uh, yes, maizena is corn flour, yes. It's a, it's a corn flour base. It's basically is going to be to make it, uh, to make the, the, the custard a little bit thicker and to add a little bit more consistency. So, so could, could you use arrowroot instead or, yes, you, you know, you can, you, can try. Try. you can try. You can try. You can try. We don't know what's going to happen, but you can try. <laughs> with maizena, I know that works proper. You know, right. with maizena and the flour. You can, you can definitely, it's going to be the same. The, the point of maizena there is to make the custard a little bit uh, thicker and, and stabilize it. Consistency on it. But you can use something that's going to be a replacement of it. 
because you might have usually like when we do our recipes, we, we have to take into consideration also the allergies so we can look into them. So yeah. if you decide to try something else, it's okay, we forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Barbara, you have a question. Yeah, um, thank you very much for that. It looks lovely. It also looks sort of a thousand million calories. Um, <laughs> if I divide by three, it's still going to make quite a lot. Will it keep sort of one, two days in the fridge? Yes, yes. yes of course. Uh, but after done, after done, for example, uh, this need to be frozen. Okay, everyone to listen, uh, need to listen this part. After I do my desserts, need to be frozen for you can cut and when we take uh, we cut the pieces then we want and when we uh, before we take again to the oven uh, need to be frozen okay so you can roll proper and in the froze uh, in the oven after is not going to overcook what you done before okay just when you the custard can be in the freezer of the problem just don't make it with the with the phyllo pastry and then put it in the freezer. Otherwise, it's not going to be good. But if you keep only the custard in the freezer, you can keep it like for a week and it's still going to be all fine. Yes, it's still going to be fine as long as it's protected. And there's not going to build any frost around it, so it's going to be fine. Just with the phyllo pastry, as you are cooking it to, to your guests or to yourself, just try to make it as fresh as possible because the phyllo pastry is going to be very crispy. So if you're going to do it like leave it a few days, it's going to become soggy. That's yeah, the that's the only point. Lovely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, we have a question now from Anne. Annie. Hello there. Hi. One thing that was asked earlier, I wonder if you can actually fully answer, how many portions does what you've made actually make? Uh, I can say then more. I did it properly around 13 portions. Mm -hmm. 13. So, thirty or three? Thirteen. 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 No, no, no. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yes. Yeah. Thirteen portions. Thirteen. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sure somebody heard that. Okay. Thank you. And now I have a question from Ava. Let's turn the band to see. Hi, Monty. Hello. Hello. I just want to like to know what kind of milk do you use? Mayo gordo? Mayo gordo? Yes, that's it. Okay. Mayo gordo. It's not uh, half fat. Half fat. It's not, uh, yeah, fat. yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at the packet with the vigor. It's the best. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we use. We actually we don't, we don't use that milk. We just re refill Thank the carton for the for the text. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Have we any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Marina, you're, you're scribbling away madly. There is, we'll send you the recipe afterwards. <laughs> Janet, Janet, you have to unmute. Okay. Yeah, done. I don't know when you're going to reopen, as none of us know, but we'd love to come and see you. Um, <laughs> Whereabouts are you? Can you give me relation to Almond Sill, perhaps? Yes, it's easy. Uh, I can explain because uh, everyone knows the, the Chinese. How is the name? We are uh, we are uh, right now. Our kitchen is on um, the road when you're going out of Almond Sill to Quartera. I don't know if you know where is the restaurant. restaurant Ishiban. Ishiban. As soon as you're coming out from Almond Sill, near to Cecil. Cecil, they have all the decorations. Uh, arts, exactly. you know. So there, when you're coming out of Amos, it's going to be on your right. And our kitchen and our offices right now are there. This is our main base of operation. But because we are one of our main, main services is going to be private chef. So we have a lot of times that we're going to the guests' houses and we're preparing everything there fresh for them. Okay. But yes, when the, when the situation gets a little bit better, we're going to have uh, regularly their food tastings and so on and so forth. And also cooking classes that we're going to have planned to have there, but for now, because of the, the way that things are, so we are just doing the services of private chefs, delivery and so on and so forth. But I will say it's just now, before no one knows, the, what, no one knew this, I will, the way, what we done, the pastel natter, the first one goes next week, I can offer until Monday, uh, Thursday, 
I will offer the pastel nata, then we're done because they did a big, massive portions. So I have a lot. So you're more than welcome to come to our place to collect you for free. Okay. So we can order from you then. Sort of yes. Like, wait, is there a minimum amount you, you make? Pastel nata. No, no, uh, anything. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, it depends. Uh, not on this situation now because we are not that fully of work because normally we have a lot of uh, clients and everything and we can't just uh, stop for a little things. But uh -huh. now we are always there. So that depend doesn't matter how many things you ask. We will do it for you. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. And my husband You're welcome. is rolling for couple classes <laughs> as soon as <laughs> cooking and drinking at the same time. <laughs> and drinking. Yeah. Drinking, yes. <laughs> but mostly the drinking. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We have a special helmet there that you allows you to drink and cook at the same time. <laughs> Now, the, the problem is that um, I know where Monty's restaurant office and tasting room is, <laughs> and you don't. So I'm going to be the first person there. <laughs> and Pauline, uh, just for you to know, and because you're not in Portugal, you can't get there. Do you remember the Don Camillo's restaurant? Okay. Uh, Monty's tasting room is at Don Camillo's restaurant, <laughs> which they took over some years ago. And um, Monty, I think we're, we're right in saying that you specialize in being a private chef and also doing special events. Exactly. And, and that's where your skills and talents are, as opposed to being just a normal restaurateur, which is a bit boring. <laughs> anyway, folks, I think you'll agree with me that's been a, an interesting um, development for the adventurers. And it's the sort of thing we would like to be doing again. And I heard Monty say to me a couple of days ago, don't worry, Terry. I've got a better camera for next time. <laughs> yeah, so, it's true. If you want to see was it our first time, experience. Right. give us right. an applause for next time, folks. Yeah. So, can, you, can you? Yes, yes. This was our first experience with the camera, so it was a little bit harder. We did it twice, the recipe, because of the first time uh, we did get the voice. So after that, we did it the second time. was a little bit better, but I believe... Uh, with a little bit more investment on what we're doing now. We're gonna be much better next time for everyone can understand us better and uh, following our recipes and all this that we are creating here. That's wonderful. Eventually the of the television. Before we say goodbye and thank you, Simonte, just to confirm that the recipe today will be on the website that's All Saints Church website. Everyone, thank you for joining us. And we will look forward to seeing you at church on Sunday morning.